Hi guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guide. Thanks very much for joining me today. Uh, as you can see, I have a review here of Faber-Castell uh, pe Pastel Pencils. I've actually had a, a really good test of these. I've done a little bit of artwork. Unfortunately, it wasn't a speed drawn or anything like that, but you will see some images throughout this video of the artwork that I've done. Um, and I will obviously give you the source of where I got the artwork from in the first place. So, as you can see here, like I said, this is uh, Faber-Castell's uh, Pip pencils this is only a 24 set but the sets that uh, this range is available in is they come in uh, like three blister packs now I think that's a relatively new way of selling the uh, pencils but it's a really good system because uh, it allows you to go out and buy uh, a small amount of pencils to get you started let you know whether you like the feel of pastel pencils that type of thing so it's it's, it's a nice way of doing things they're also sold up in stock and then in terms of the, their bigger sets whenever you know after the, the little blister sets uh, you can get a set of um, 12 24 36 and 60 so 60 is the largest set that that they come in now although these are part of faber castell's artist range like the the polychromos uh, the albert Dürer, they don't have like a a, a large 120 set which would be nice but i'm not too sure whether you know when it comes down to pastel pencils you could get 120 shades well uh, of course you can because you, there, there's lots of different uh pastel manufacturers that create hundreds and hundreds of shades but i think uh faber castell must just look at the 60 set and think that that's enough in terms of the the pastel pencils but it, it would be nice to see uh, 120 set and and i think you'll find Throughout all of my testing here and all this review, that is probably my only criticism of these pa pastel pencils. And it's not even a criticism. It's more uh, a compliment because I loved using them so much. Uh, and to have the ability to go out and get like 120 set like, like you can with the, the polychromos would, would just be the cherry on top of the cake, really. So, uh, and like I said... I'm not too sure if I said there, you can get them open stock as well. So let's open them up here and we shall take a look at them. Um, you can see here, obviously, I've, I have used these. but So let's take a look at the barrel of the pencil first of all. Now, the, whether you're an artist or not, or whether you think pencils look nice or not, I don't think anybody could deny how, how beautiful these pencils look because... If you look closely at the barrel here, you can see it um, with the lacquer on it, the, the, the varnish on it, you can see the beautiful wood grain all the way through. I mean, it's just like holding a part of nature in your hand. Um, it's a round barrel. And in terms of information on the barrel, so if we work from the core to the very end, we have uh, Germany here, which is obviously where Faber-Castell are uh, based. They're a German company. Then a uh, pip pastel. So with every with any pencil that you use, it'll have the brand of pencil that that you're actually using stamped on the pencil. And then you have the Faber Castell logo here. Then when you turn it over, uh, you have a barcode on the barrel there, obviously for open stock purse um, reasons. Uh, and then you have a number here, this one one two, uh, and then there's a number after that. One one two is to let the manufacturer know that uh, you're ordering a pastel pencil. So that's what that first number is. That first number you will see it on all pencils, all the uh, pastel pencils. And then the number after that corresponds to the pigment of the pencil. So if you put an order in for pastel pencils and you're doing it through the numbers, uh, if you put 1122, the manufacturer knows straight away that it's a pastel pencil you're after. And then the number after that re references the pigment. And then beside that, we've got a star system. Now this star system, as many of you already know, uh, corresponds to the light fastness of the, the pigments with inside these pencils. And I'll go through all of that later on down the line. But the light fast information of these pencils is there on the barrel. So when you're using it, you know exactly um, how light fast this pencil is that you're using. And then right on the very end here, we have this tiny little um, half inch flash which indicates the pigment as well um it, it really is a beautiful pencil uh this beautiful round barrel 
with uh, the, the, the wood grain running all the way through it. It's just a beautiful piece of craftsmanship and there's not really much more that needs to be said about that. Now, in terms of sharpening these pencils, because I know a lot of people ask me, you know, with, with regards to pastel pencils, how do you sharpen them? Well, I've got a few different ways of doing it here. With this pencil here, I've just used um, an ordinary manual hand crank sharpener and you can see there that it sharpens it absolutely beautifully. A lot of true pastel pencil artists will probably tell you to refrain from using that type of style uh, sharpening system because it may not always be good for the pencil and it may not always be good for the, the blade in your sharpener. Uh, a lot of uh, pastel artists will use like a, a blade um, which as you can see here on this pencil I've tried to use and I've not done a very good job of it but there is a way in uh, holding the pencil using the blade making sure that you don't slice your fingers off if you're a young artist you want to get uh, an adult to help you with it you don't want to be around blades in any case but like a, an exacto knife or something like that something a little bit safer than a razor blade um, and try to sharpen it that way I know because when I've been doing all this testing, I've come across many, many people through emails and stuff like that asking me various questions. A lot of people, a lot of artists that have got problems with their hands, um, which actually really surprised me. But it was something I had never ever thought of when I was doing all this testing and what have you and putting all these different things into practice. But when you, when you hear about people's struggles with whatever ailment that is that they have... Um, it makes you think about things a little bit more and so for somebody that has problems with their hands whether it be arthritis or or just some sort of deformity or some sort of accident that they were in that has um, rendered their hands not as useful as what they once were using um, a blade is going to be really really difficult for them and so I was just letting them know letting anybody know that those manual hand crank sharpeners do work re re really well and you're able to get a really nice fine point on on the pencil now i'm going to do a little bit of testing here and the paper that i'm using is canson pastel paper um i bought this at a, a, a little local art store here in durham my wife got it for me uh, so i'm just going to lay down some colors here we're going to do a little bit of testing with the the pastel itself and uh take it from there. So I'm just getting out a few colours. Now, one thing uh, about these pencils is there's no uh, pigment name on the, the, the pencil. Now, I'm, I'm going to do this a little, a little bit differently, obviously from when I'm t uh, testing ordinary pencils. I'm just rubbing lightly on this paper. Obviously it's a pastel paper so you've got plenty of tooth on it and stuff like that. But I'm just going to do a light um, application of the pastel pencil. And uh, work my way down the, the, the colours that I have. And then we'll do like a, a, a blending of the, the, the pastel powder. Now a lot of people um, think that pastel pencils are for um, when you're doing pastel art you use your blocks and stuff like that there to get the the largest uh, coverage that you can and then you come in with your pencils and you put lay down your pencils uh, and that gives you the detail which is absolutely correct that's exactly how you can do it but there are some phenomenal artists out there pastel artists that use just the pencils and they can create some absolutely beautiful work one of which the image that i'm showing you now is uh, a um, a piece that i done using the faber castell these faber castell pastel pencils and it was a, a a british artist called colin bradley he's a pastel pencil artist and he is amazing absolutely phenomenal i'll have a link down to his website um over on the art gear guide my written review of these pencils but um he has a lot of courses. He's got a lot of stuff up on YouTube and stuff like that. They're teaching you how to use pastel pencils. And he, like I say, his work is just phenomenal. His work speaks for itself. You don't need me blathering on about it. Um, 
But the, the piece that I copied off one of his courses or one of his YouTube videos is the piece that you're seeing now. Uh, and that was all down to his directions and everything else. And the pencils that I used was the Faber-Castell uh, pit pencils. So it gives you a little bit of an indication as to the, um, the, the colours and stuff like that there, how well it layers down and all those other things. So I'm going to use a, uh, a couple of different techniques here. So I'm going to use my finger. A lot of people, let me zoom in here a little bit for you as well so you can see this better. There we go. So a lot of people, when they, um, they don't like using pastels because they don't like the feel of the, uh, the consistency of the chalk and powder in their hands, which is totally understandable. Uh, which was a lot of the reasons why they turned to pastel pencils. But even sometimes in pastel pencils, that you might need to smudge it or whatever with your fingers. So I'm going to do a little bit of testing here on this. And um, just try and pull pull the pigment out a little bit. And show you how... F now, don't forget, these are light applications. Uh, I'm going to use this blue one here, which you might be able to see a little bit better. And I have this... Uh, I think they're called color shapers or color blenders or whatever. They're these little rubber tip things and they're excellent for using with pastels. Uh, you can get much bigger ones than this. They come in all sorts of sizes, shapes and everything. Yeah, you can get them. I'll have a link for them over in the Art Gear Guide, uh, a set of them that you can get on Amazon. But you can use these for um, like blending the colors in, doing rather than using your fingers. And you can see there that with because it's this soft rubber, it allows you to push the pigment right down into the paper. And ha I think these give you a little bit more control than what, say, like your, your finger would do. And then all you've got to do is you just got to rub it off on a piece of cloth or your hand or something like that to get the pig excess pigment off the, um, off the tip of it. Um, and because they're soft, because they're like this little soft rubber tip, it's not going to damage the tooth of the paper or anything like that. Um, it's not like an eraser or anything. Um, but you can see there, that was just some uh, a light application. So I'm going to put down a, a slightly heavier application and um, show you what how vibrant these pigments really are that, that are that's inside these pastel pencils. So... That's a, a real heavy application there, but you you can you get a gist of just how rich and vibrant those pigments are. I'm sorry about the camera. It'll go in and out of blur whenever I uh, move my hand and then move it out of the way. So you'll have to bear with me a second while it adjusts to the colors. Uh, and then this is like a, an ochre colour. Now, although the pigment name isn't on the barrel of the pencil, um, you can find the um, you can find the pigment names on uh, Faber-Castell. They have like a, a PDF, which has, um, it has a list of the, the colours and the pigment name beside the colour. So I know it's not always ideal whenever you buy a pencil. You may want to know what the colours are, what the, the names of them are, that type of thing. But I heard a really good argument against this, against this uh, from an artist, and that is that it's not always a good idea to get bogged down with the the actual name of the pigment because if if you're using lots of different color pencils from different companies and stuff like that, they all have their own different names for pigments. In any case, I mean, it, you have your you know your cobalts and things like that and all the rest of it. Um, but some some companies don't go down that line. They adapt their own names, whatever. So it's not always a good idea to get bogged down with names in any case. I think it's possibly the best way to do it is to create your own color swatches and um, and look at the pigments visually and see if it's going to fit what you need to do for the art that you're doing. So as you can see here, obviously I put down a much, much heavier application which allows you to spread the, um, the pastel powder out And you can see there how well it blends. And then I'll use this um, smudger. 
and I know I'm, I know I I know I'm using the wrong term for these color blenders, color shapers, smudgers. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but you can see there again. You know that it it allows you to smooth out the the pigment because obviously when you're using pastels, there's a lot of excess powder and stuff like that, and rather than blow it away, you want to try and um, utilize that pastel powder by keeping it within your uh, your your picture um, so that's where these uh, smudgers come in really really handy you can see there with that powder that's moving around you know I'm just using this smudger to grab hold of it and keep it where I want it to be and like I said th these are fantastic for people that really don't like would like to use pastels, but they 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 just can't stomach the uh, the texture and the consistency of them and that type of thing. So, with regards to erasing, now a lot of people um, think that whenever you're doing pastels and stuff like that, that you can't erase it, but you can. Um, I use a, an an ordinary uh, pencil eraser. And as you can see here, you're not always going to get right back to white or anything like that. You know, right back to the paper. But it's uh, these uh, pencil erasers do a really good job in helping you control the pastel by using the eraser for either a mistake or for actually uh, drawing. Uh, you can also use... Um, a kneaded eraser and a, you, you will see a lot of pastel artists will use these kneaded erasers because uh, it gives you slightly more control in terms of how much you're going to lift and uh, whenever you're blending that type of thing so just let me try and Now you can see there that the, the kneaded eraser just lifts off uh, little layers of it uh, and it allows you to get a little bit more control. It's a little bit less um, brutal than a, a pa uh, an eraser pencil. Anyway guys, that's my um, review for the, the Faber-Castell Pit, pa um, Pit Pastel Pencils. I do have a list of all the different... Um, prices for the sets and stuff like that for the US, the UK and Europe uh, over on the Art Gear Guide. There will be a link down below. You can go across and have a little look and see um, the different prices that are available. There will be links over to Amazon if you want to buy them as well. Um, and I'll also have some links down to for the, the, the colour shapers, those uh, smudgers that I was using as well. Just in case you're interested, you might want to have a look at those as well. Um, don't forget, if you've got any questions or anything like that that you think I've missed out, um, or ordinarily when I'm doing tests and stuff like that, I do it on black paper as well. But with these pastel pencils, I don't have any uh, black pastel paper. But I'm going to try and get some because I've got a lot more pastel pencil testing coming up soon. So I'll try and get hold of some, pastel, some black pastel paper uh, to do those tests on. But for now... Uh, that, that's my review for the Faber-Castell Pit Pastel Pencils. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Links for that will be all down below. Or go across to the Art Gear Guide. You'll see links for over there as well. And don't forget um, the artwork that I've done with these pencils that you've seen on the um, video here. Colin Bradley is the artist who originally done that artwork. Um, his website, I will have a link for his website and his YouTube channel uh, over on the Art Gear Guide and in the description box down below. But if you want to go across, take a look at his work, all the different courses and stuff they got that Colin Bradley has. And uh, I think he, he actually has a, a, a Craftsy course as well. So it's well worth going across, having a look on Craftsy as, worth, as well uh, to get a slightly more comprehensive. But if you go on his website, he's got loads of links and stuff they got. You'll be able to find your way around it and uh, find what you need. 
Anyway, guys, thanks very much. Look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye.